4, chapter 28. Pranjana becomes a woman in the next life. Text number 11. Bayanam no brajo brato. Uh, 
to how we came to this place. The first, the first part of this verse says, under the circumstances, which reveals that something's happened prior to this to bring us to this situation, to this circumstances. Under the circumstances, the elder brother of Yavana, known as Prajvara, set fire to the city. So what are the circumstances which brought about this event? There's two types of circumstances in everybody's life, and all circumstances. There's the immediate current events which bring one to a particular circumstance. But there's also the historical back further and further which help bring one or of some, to a particular event. For example, if I said, under the circumstances, the Pandavas and the Kurus ended up on the battlefield of Kuru, etc. Well, we can look at that from different points of view. We can say that because the Pandavas had spent 13 years in exile, and now their time was over and they came back to us in a but we're not giving any, given any rule, under the circumstances, they were going to fight. This is kind of like a current event. Or we could say, because of a dice game, where the Pandavas were cheated. Or we could even go back to their birth and say, because Yudhishthir was the eldest, he was the rightful heir. So, because he didn't have the uh, reign of the throne, therefore, under the circumstances, there was war. Or we could even go back to Dhritarashtra and Kandu. Under the circumstances, it brought about this event. So, we can see that there is the immediate, current events. And most people only see those. They only become absorbed in what's happening at the present moment, rather than trying to perceive how I got here, what brought me here, what brought us here, and where are we going from here. So, Pranjana, his whole story has been being narrated for three chapters. There's a whole story of a person here. Each one of us has a whole story, our life's story. And although we see each other and uh, relate to one another, we really don't know the intricacies and details of one another's story very well. Even if we live with someone, like when I got married, for example, there's a person who has a whole other life prior to the time we met. Her parents, her brothers and sisters, her upbringing and wherever she was brought up in, or she was brought up in, and we come together. But as you go through life, you start to find out how those influences from upbringing have brought that person to be who he or she is today. So Paranjana is now in a situation where the elder brother of Yadana Raj, known as Priya Prajvara, is setting fire to his city. So let's go back to just a little bit. At the beginning of this chapter, there's a lot of links in this uh, particular story. This chapter begins, My dear King Pachinibarisha, Narayani, first of all, instructed the Prachetas, the sons of Pachinibarisha, and instructed them how to do meditation and bhakti, and they're now under the water, in the ocean, doing their tapasya, feeling compassion also for their father and for the citizens upon whom King Pachinibarisha was the king. Narada has gone to his palace and King Pachini Barisha was performing animal sacrifices to try and get good karma. And Narada understood that this, saw that this man is performing activities which will not bring him ultimate happiness. So therefore I want to instruct him. He's starting to instruct him. Because of King Pachini Barisha's nature and character, Narada is instructing him not directly. He's a king, he's proud. But he's using the form of an allegory, a story about somebody else, by which he can grab 
the intention of King Quachin Bhattacharya by using this analogy. It's a pretty technique, a strategy. When in actuality, Karanjana and King Quachin Bhattacharya are allegorically the same person. So he's using the story about somebody else to tell him about him. But by using the other person, it uh, softens the resistance of his audience. So, Narada is explaining. Afterward, the king of the Yavanas, whose name is fear itself, as well as Prajvara, Kalyakana, and his soldier, began to travel all over the world. Kalakani was described in the previous chapter as the daughter of time personified. So, basically what's happening is Purandana is being attacked by time. Previously we learned about his life as a king, his life with his wife, his life with his hundreds and thousands of daughters and sons. And now we're hearing under the circumstances, the current circumstances, is that he's being attacked by invalidity, old age. He's being attacked by the king of the Yavanas, which is his youth is being lost. Invalidity is attacking to the point now where it touched Vara, the fever at the last moment of life is attacking. He is without a doubt imminently defeated. He's facing defeat. There's no way that he can have a comeback in this battle. So, my question, we have a microphone, did you get the microphone? So I'm going to Please help me. If you were the king, an imminent defeat was inevitable. You're going to be defeated. Without question, it's a must. What do you do? Can anybody help us? What is your next, what is your strategy? You're going to lose. You're going to, you're going to be defeated in this war. Without question, it's already concluded. What is your strategy? What do you do? Ask for peace. Ask for peace. In other words, you surrender to the defeat. What if the other side disagrees and said no? We don't we, we won't give you peace. Kalya Khan, the daughter of death, the daughter of time, and Prajvara, the fever, and ultimately death itself, will not say, okay, you, you've asked for peace, we'll let you exist. It won't happen. Your defeat is imminent. It's coming. What is your strategy? What do you do? Anybody? Come on. Run. Your defeat is inevitable. You can't run. How can you run from inevitable time? Join forces. Go down fighting. Go down fighting. Okay. You can do that. Let's, let's, let's use this example in this, in this uh, circumstance. Go down fighting. Medical science. Right? I have a disease. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to spend billions of dollars, trillions of dollars. I'm going to get all the top scientists in the world to try and figure out how I can defeat this enemy of death. Go down fighting. You will go down fighting. What, 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 some other suggestions? Acceptance. Pardon? Acceptance. Pratik Maharaj. How is that answer? Yeah. He inquired. Very good. He inquired. What should a person do? That's what I'm asking. What should a person do? It's imminent. You're going to be defeated. What is the plan? What is the strategy? You can. <coughs> Krishna is time himself, so we can take shelter of Krishna. So when Krishna comes as, as, as a mother cat, not as a killer cat, so we can, that's 2, 3, 70, where we instead discuss, we participate in Uttam Shoka at that time, it's cannot be taken away from us. So, so instead of fighting with Krishna in the form of his time, we serve Krishna in the form of his Krishna Katha. Then okay, time okay. Time. That's, 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 a, that's a practical application of something that will lead us to, to, to a better place. What I'm looking for 
is that your strategy should be, what will I do after I'm defeated? What is the future? How do I take care of the kingdom? What's going to happen after the defeat? Where will I go? How will I function? What will I do? What will my kingdom do? How will, how will we function? How can we, so how, how can we build up from where we've gone? How can, how can we prepare for a future after defeat? This is human life. Human life means you will be defeated. Human life, material life means we will be defeated. I'm, no question. Everybody from the beginning of time, right? Because the thought he could um, go down and fight or bend around it or adjust something. Not possible. Death is imminent. So this is the um, basic situation, basic information that Narada Muni is giving King Pachibharsha. You're engaged in fruitive activity. You're engaged in uh, sacrificing animals, hoping for a better future, but this will not bring you a better future. Please listen to my story, and I'll explain how you can have a better, better future. Now, with this particular character of Paranjana, the chapter title gives his future away. It reveals what will happen. Paranjana becomes a woman in the next life. So, how does that come about? How did, how did, how did that process take place? Bhagavad Gita introduces the concept how this happens. That it's a, it's, a, it's a basic explanation, isn't it? That the, the, the living entity travels from boy who he goes to old age, and at the time of death he goes to another body. The self of our soul is not bewildered. That's not really very much detail, other than an overall explanation of how it took, of what takes place. Later in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains, the living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aroma. Shrotam chakshus varsanam cha rasanam grihanam eva cha adistaya manastayam visayam upaseva. The living entity thus taking on another gross body obtains a certain type of ear, tongue, and nose and sense of touch which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. Now we're going a little deeper into the science of how you go from one place to another. We all see each other's gross bodies. The gross body is basically symbolic of a subtle body. And just like this body has different features, like there's soft parts, kind of like skin or fat, there's liquid parts like urine and blood, mucus, there's hard parts like bones, veins and things. There's all different kinds of characteristics even to the gross body. Similarly, there are different qualities and characteristics to the soul body, all covering the conscious living entity. The conscious living entity animates this soul body, which manifests as a gross body. So, in the same way that we have immediate circumstances that we see before us, but now we've shown how there's underlying events or circumstances which bring one to a certain position. Similarly, we have a conscious mind, which is here right now, and looking around and perceiving the senses, but there's a whole realm of activity going on in the subconscious. And beyond, uh, consciousness is practically unlimited, even within a limited jiva. This consciousness has been existent eternally, and it's become covered a long time ago, and it's been traveling, covered by all these different events. 
It's sort of like a, uh, a super video. Like when we take a video, we only can see the physical and hear some audio. But our consciousness, the mind, experiences the world through the five senses. So we touch, we smell, we, 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 there's even emotion involved. So there's like actually a whole ocean of events on the conscious plane taking place as we progress. And all this creates our life story. We have the present life, but that also has all the events of previous lives which brought us to this. And what we do in this life will propel us to the next one. So what's happening here is that our has very nicely described who this progeny is. Just in a cursory look, since I'm not living in New York, I skipped back a little bit to see if I can find some verses which reveal how this process of transmigration is taking place in this character of Pranjana. So way back in the characteristics of Pranjana in the first chapter about him, once he's married, when the queen drank liquor, King Pranjana also engaged in drinking. When the queen dined, he also dined with her. When she chewed, King Pranjana also chewed along with her. When the, king, when the queen sang, he also sang. Similarly, when the queen cried, he also cried, and so on. When the queen touched something, the king would also touch it. And when the dear queen was lamenting, the poor king also had to follow her in lamentation. In the same way, when the queen felt enjoyment, he also enjoyed. And when the queen was satisfied, the king also enjoyed satisfaction. So, obviously this character has become absorbed in his queen. Previously in this canto, we're, 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 another nice point, which we'll uh, kind of bring to as we go through like music, kind of start slowly and then goes higher and higher and beat, 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 beat. It's supposed to grab you and bring you to higher places. What we hope to do here in this little discussion today is start with this and then show how from spiritual consciousness uh, it actually elevates rather than just transmigrate. So, as King Prajna becomes absorbed, um, further indications of what happens is here. The queen took her bath and dressed herself nicely with all auspicious garments and ornaments. After taking food and becoming completely satisfied, she returned to the king. On seeing her beautifully decorated, attractive face, the king welcomed her with devotion. Queen Paranjani embraced the king, and the king also responded by embracing her shoulders. In this way, in a solitary place, they enjoyed joking words. Thus King Prajna became very much captivated by his beautiful wife and deviated from his good sense. He forgot that the passing of days and nights meant that his span of life was being reduced without profit. So, we're in the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Those of us who study and have been around for a little while understand that there's a concept that you're not supposed to jump into the tenth canto. Why not? It's Krishna's intimate, most wonderful pastimes. Why not? What is the like, negative side of that? Well, the point is that there's a, a particular technical term called aropa. Aropa means that when you take your concept and you put it on top of something else, you're only seeing what you create. You're not really seeing what's happening. Sure, Prabhupada, I'm sure a lot of you have seen that video where it talks about Atmavan Manyate Jiga. You see the world through your eyes. We all do. So when we look at somebody else, we think, oh, he's like this, or she's like that. That's our perception of them. It's not really who or what they are. So in the same way, if we read, study, become absorbed in Krishna's tenth canto activities, what we basically do is we take our concept of what that is, 
and place it on it, rather than really understanding who he is, what he's doing, who his associates are. But if you follow the process of bhakti from the beginning, sadhana, mighty bhakti, then gradually what happens, Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second canto, third canto, fourth canto, there are lessons which inform the practitioner and teach the practitioner how to imbibe higher levels of knowledge, just like when you uh, start in school. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. 2 plus 2, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 3. You have to learn these over and over again. Then 3 minus 2, 5 minus 2, then 2 times 3, 10 divided by 4. Uh, it, 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 it's the same information, but it's more advanced and more deep. So in the same way, you have to start at the beginning and learn, and go through the different steps. Bhagavad Gita, as we just said, gave us the indication that the living entity transmigrates. And he gets a, a eye and a nose and a, a particular sort of body to enjoy in a certain way. But the details of how that happens, why it happens, and the science doesn't reveal it. In the beginning of fourth canto, we read about somebody going back home, back to God. Who was that? Juvamar, so went back home, back to God. And what was he thinking of? What was his life absorbed in? So here, we're hearing about somebody who's becoming a woman. Now in the next canto, we'll hear about somebody who becomes a deer. And then another dude. He goes through three lives, the shot And then uh, the deer, and then Jeff Bhagat. Uh, sorry, Bhagat. So, the, the science is elevated as we progress. So, I hope that this gives a basic um, picture of this particular circumstance with this particular character. Now, let's try to... Um, actually, there's a good verse in here that... Uh, from Bhagavad Gita, which we can go a little deeper into. From 4, 8, 6. Yam yam vabi smaran bhavam tajanti anta kalevara tamti aivakti kaunteya sadata bhava bhavita. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fear. So, some people, they're afraid that at the time of death, they're going to think of fill in the blank. Because they saw it or thought of it that day. This verse doesn't talk about that. This, this verse and this concept is presenting before us something more along with the lines of what I was saying. The word bhava is in this verse three times. Yum yum sma, yum yum bhavi smaran bhavam. Three times in one verse. Bhava is not, Srila Prabhupada translates in Bhagavad Gita, state of being. State of being is a lot different than state of mind, state of conscious mind. It's a state of being. It's who, it's who your life story has brought you to be. Just like Ranjana. His life story has brought him to be that. Dhruva Maharaj's life story brought him to be him. So each one of us are being presented with options. This is where our free will and man as the architect of his own destiny comes into being. We're being given the information, the process, and, 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 the, and the path. You can go any way you like. Take, take the, go, go ahead. Take your pick. Follow this process, you'll get that result. Follow this and you'll go there. Follow that and you'll go there. This is what Vedic knowledge presents before us. And then it's up to us, as individuals, to apply the process. In um, the introduction to Nectar of Devotion, Upadesha Amrita by Srila Prabhupada Srila Prabhupada says that advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on Attitude of the follower. 
wow, that's pretty, uh, that's, like, like, it's not that you're just beginning, so I've done my church and job, well, I gave up everything, now, like, I'm on a conveyor belt back to God then, all I have to do is hold on. Well, what is holding on, is the question. What, what does it mean that we have to do in a relationship? If you have a relationship with anybody, it's a true, at least two-person experience. It's not that you simply passively experience the other person's activities, like a movie screen. A movie screen really doesn't get involved in a movie. It just kind of reflects it to everybody else. But when you're watching it, you're an active participant in your own view of it. So, bhava is something that's cultivated from deeper within, but there are different types of bhavas. Uh, perhaps you've heard of stai bhava. Stai bhava is one's permanent, steady, always. Nandamara's Nandamara's stai bhava is vatsalya bhava. He's a father of Krishna, Madhya Sojas, uh, 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 the mother. Um, so there's Staiva, but then there's transitory, temporary um, manifestations, Sanchari Bhavas, Yavachari Bhavas. So there are all kinds of Bhavas. What does Yam Yam Bhavi Smaran Bhavam mean? It means that which you've cultivated, which will bring you to uh, uh, when the, when the subtle body leaves this body, it's filled with desires, it's filled with events, it's filled with emotions, it's filled with all the things we have. And by nature, by Krishna's arrangement, super soul and delegated demigods in charge of that realm, the living entity is taken to the new body and put into the womb. And as we, as we all know, even by looking at an ultrasound picture of an embryo, there's the development of that body. That's where life's story begins in this particular lifetime. And in Parunjana's story, we're at the end of, end of the spectrum. Where are the part where it's all breaking down? Also in Bhakti, there are different stages and steps. Just like these steps in life. So the Acharyas have analyze all these different things. Why is it important to understand them, know about them? For the same reason that I'm discussing here, if, 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 if you don't, if we don't, absorb ourselves in understanding from the Acharya's point of view, then whose point of view will we understand it and perceive it by? Our own conditioned perception, which Probably is really true due to the four defects that we all know. So, from Bhakti Rasamita Sina, Adosha Khat Tasa Rusanga, Kabajana Kriya, Tanaka Nivatisya, Tato Nesta Ruchisuta, Atasha Tisato Avas, Tata Prema Didanchan Ti. In the beginning there must be a little faith. Srila Prabhupada says that even if a person says, oh, let me go to the temple or let me, let, let me listen to that, uh, who are those guys? See, Harinam, who is that? Somebody plays a witness. Come over and somebody hands you or some food. It, it takes a little faith to put it in your mouth. Unknown person handing you some food. Take some faith. Who is this and where is that? So you got a little faith, isn't there? Association with devotees. Once one associates with devotees, this progressive stage, if they become enlivened, enthused, they like it, then the desire to take initiation and follow the rules and regulations takes place. And Bhajana Kriya happens. Bhajana Kriya means Kriya is an action of bhajana, of worship. And we follow according to rules and regulations set down by the spiritual master. It appears, and it is, in the beginning, very it's called regulated devotional service. I'm uh, 60 years old. Say I wanted to learn how to play the violin. 
I've never played a violin. Never picked up one. So if I was to pick it up and start to play it in front of you all, would there be any enjoyment for any of us? No. It would squeak and it would squeal and it would sound horrible. Similar. If a person who doesn't know about Krishna's philosophy hasn't developed his or her uh, relationship with Krishna maturely, when he or she tries to meditate or think of Krishna's intimate pastimes, is that pleasing to anyone? Because they're conditioned, they're, they're, they're not cultured and mature in that development. So, these processes of regulation, if however, I went to a teacher, and that teacher told me, you do like this every day, two hours, you learn this scale. I play the violin and I, I become accustomed to that. Then he takes me to the next level. Next level, just like the addition and subtraction of math and numbers. So, in bhakti, the more we practice, the more we um, engage in the process, the further development after Bhajana Kriya comes uh, anartha nivriti, the unwanted things in the heart begin to go away and the desire to perform spiritual activities and not do those prohibited activities. Uh, like, it doesn't take very long, for example, for a person who takes to Krishna consciousness and eats prasad, it doesn't take long before they don't want to eat meat. It's a matter of a few weeks, maybe a month. I remember when I first uh, joined, I joined on the Radhanamara bus program, and that was a very sheltered environment. It was on a bus with 25, 30 brahmacharis and two sannyasis. And we were on the bus from 4 o'clock in the morning, then we would do Mugalarti, uh, chant our rounds, Srimad Bhagavatam class, Prasad, and then we would go out to colleges and set up Radhanamara and uh, the, like these things everybody's sitting on and the music, and Vishnu John would leave, and then he would explain the philosophy, and then we'd take some prasadam in the afternoon and serve it. And then we break it all down and go back to the bus and have Sunday Arti, read Krishna book, Bhagavad Gita book class, and take rest every single day. No, no outside really um, influence. But then what happened was because Tamal Krishna Maharaj had been Srila Prabhupada's secretary, he knew that Srila Prabhupada wanted more book distribution. So once per week, rather than going to the colleges, we started with incense and back guarded magazines going out into the back of the into the colleges or wherever it was. And I remember one of the first times, now I had obviously been a mediator in my upbringing, become a vegetarian, and that was maybe two or three months later. And I went out to a parking lot in a mall, in, in, in a shopping area, where there was a steak and ale restaurant in the parking lot. I almost gagged, almost vomited by the smell of the cooking meat that most people in that environment, their mouth waters, but I almost gagged because of the difference. So this is what's happening in an Arthaniverty stage, that our previous attractions and likings and things that uh, absorb us and we, we find pleasure in, gradually we no longer find pleasure in those. And they become distasteful. And that weight, as it increases, causes one to become steady. Once one becomes steady, they become fixed. Once they become fixed, they start to get a little taste. Of course, there's a taste in the beginning, otherwise how would one begin? Uh, continue. But the point is that the taste increases to the point where one likes to do it, wants to do it, and does it ultimately spontaneously. That natural love for Krishna, which is situated in the heart of all living beings, naturally awakens through this process to the point where the person naturally wants to do it without having been told, without going through the different steps of regulation. This is the stage of father, the preliminary stage of love of God. So we have the opportunity, the option, the, 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 the choice is yours, the choice is ours. Which father do, you, do we want to cultivate in life? And then apply ourselves to that process, its nature, 
whatever you apply yourself to, whatever you become absorbed in, that you will become absorbed in, in your mind, in your intelligence, in your senses, in your emotions, and everything will start to uh, move around that. That's nature. This is what's being described. Pranjit is becoming a woman. Bharat Maharaj became a deer. Truth Maharaj went back home back to God. Finally, to end the class, Rupa Goswami's verse uh, 8 from Fukudejan. The essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. It's not that you just, boom, go to the Bible stage. No, it's a gradual, just like learning the instrument, learning the math, learning anything. It's a gradual, step-by-step -step progression that brings one to that end. In this way, one should reside in Braj, or Loka Vrindavana, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees, who are deeply attached to his devotional service. Essence of all advice in the Vedas. Very simple process, very wonderful taste in the process. We're all here in Vrindavan hoping to get that taste that um, enthralls our hearts, takes over our hearts. And uh, the, the more we uh, give our attention and our love to the process, the more that seed of love will grow because it's, it's naturally within everyone's heart. The verse again. Under the circumstances, the elder brother of Yavana Raj, known as Prajvara, set, the fu set fire to the city to please his younger brother, whose other name is fear itself. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Shiva Bhagavatam Kita. Bhagavad Gita.